everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm back at the Best in Black Apartment Diorama to give the kitchen a makeover. I want to change the backsplash. I'm thinking of painting the kitchen island, some new lighting. I also need to finish the sides of the cabinets and maybe a coffee bar. So lots to do, I need to get started. I'm going to freshen up the wall with some paint. Originally, I made the brick wall for this diorama. I really want to lighten up the kitchen, so I'm going to paint it white with some baking soda mixed in to add more texture. There's lots of holes in the foam board, so I'm just applying some white glue. And then the final coat of paint. Looks really fresh now. I'm giving this kitchen a little makeover. First, I'm going to remove it from the foam board. I'm going to finish the sides with balsa wood, popsicle sticks, and coffee stir sticks. I'm also extending the countertop so it overlaps the side.
I'm mixing more black paint with glitter so I can paint the countertop again. I also want a new faucet, so I'm going into my little stash of thingamajigs and I found this plastic piece. I think it was from a pair of socks when I bought it, or something like that. I'm cutting more foam board for the back to hold the cabinets in place.
I'm wrapping the foam board with this textured wallpaper I bought from Timu. Not sponsored. And now I need a backsplash. I bought these perler beads at a garage sale. I'm gonna to try to create a backsplash with them. I've never used perler beads before, so I really hope it works out. I want my backsplash to be black and white, so I'm separating all the black and white beads, but I'm also separating out the gray beads, just in case I don't have enough of the black and white. This is the template that came with the beads. Before I start on the backsplash, I want to practice a little bit. I've never done this before and I don't know if I'll have enough of the beads. Plus, I want to try a few different patterns. I watched a couple of videos. They set to iron for about 20 seconds. But that didn't work for me. This time I ironed for about a minute. And that was way too long. Not sure I like this pattern anyways. So I'm going to try this again with a couple of other patterns. It's not working. My iron is hot, not super hot, and I think it's on the highest setting. I tried it a few times, but it wasn't working. And this iron is only a couple of years old. Then I grabbed my old iron that used to belong to my grandmother. It's probably a fire hazard, but it worked. I think I like the checkered look, but this template is too small. So I thought, I'll see if I can find something bigger on Facebook Marketplace. I don't want to spend too much on this. I'm a little frugal, but I did find someone who was selling a set for $15. I didn't want to spend that much, so I offered her $5. She said, no, that's okay. I would just use the smaller template and make it work. And yay, she said yes. And the best part was, she was only 10 minutes away from me. So that made me really happy. If this works out, I would definitely like to create more projects with the Perler Beats. First thing I have to do is measure the kitchen. Instead of measuring every corner, I'm just going to create a rectangular shape. Yes, I know I'll be wasting a lot of beads. If I run out, I'll reshape it to use less beads.
The backsplash is a bit small, so I'm creating more to add on to it. Oops, that was too big. Need to do it again. I'm gluing on some more cardboard to level up with the perler beads. So when I glue the kitchen back onto it, it's all level. I think I should have finished the sides when the foam board was already attached so there wouldn't be a gap. I'm just going to glue on a dowel to cover the gap between the foam board and the cabinet. I love how the backsplash turned out. I definitely want to do more with the perler beads and try different patterns. What do you think? Do you like this backsplash better or the last one? I think there's too many wood tones in the kitchen. I want to lighten up the kitchen a bit. So I'm going to paint the island pewter grey. I'm repainting the top of the island as well, black paint mixed with the glitter. I then gave it a coat of Mod Podge to make it look glossy, but that was a big mistake. It didn't dry very well. So I applied another layer of the paint. And then a layer of this clear varnish. Now I need a towel rack, so I'm going to glue one on the side of the island. I'm using a dowel, a couple of small beads, and a bit of fabric. I like it. What do you think? Does it look better? 
I think that's the perfect spot for a coffee bar. I'm using this jewelry box and I thought I was going to use this piece of wood I just thrifted, but I decided to use this cow coaster instead. I didn't paint the jewelry box. This is how I thrifted it. I'm going to give it a good sanding because I want to stand it the same as the kitchen cabinets. I'm only using one drawer, so I'm inserting a piece of balsa wood so I can cover the gap inside. I'm painting the inside and the drawer front black and staining the outside with the walnut stain. I was going to use the stick as the handle but I think I'll go through my little metal drawers to see what I could find. I have this one, I think it will work. And I also have the screws for it, so I don't have to glue it on. I want to give the cabinet more height, so I'm using these abacus beads I thrifted. Ooh, I don't think the handle looks good. It should be silver like the other handles. That's okay, it's an easy fix, but this time I'm gluing it on. I love how that turned out. Now for the cow coaster. I'm going to glue it above the cabinet and glue on the shelf for coffee cups and a plant.
I want to create a new chandelier for the kitchen. I saw people making light strands with ping pong balls and I thought I could make some lighting for my dioramas with the ping pong balls. So I went searching for them. I didn't find any at the dollar store. I only found orange beer pong balls, but that won't work. So I went to Canadian Tire and I found some. First thing I did is remove the logo from the ball. All I had to do was sand it off. Very easy. Then I made a hole for my bulb. There's a line in the ball you can see when the light bulb is on, so I'm going to try that again. But I'll do that later. Now I want to create a shade for my ping pong lights. I'm using balloons and yarn. I'm using a big balloon for the chandelier and smaller ones for the pendant lighting over the kitchen island. Well, that didn't work out. The balloons were really stuck to the yarn. What did I do wrong? Should I have covered the balloon with something like Vaseline? Maybe the balloons were too old? I don't know. If you know, please tell me in the comments section. I really want to try this again. But for now, I'm using this little hat with the ping pong ball. I hope it's going to look good. But first I need to use a different ping pong ball because of the lines. I want it to be at least centered. I tried finding the lines with another light and then I cut into it to fit my bulb. Then I cut a hole into the hat so I can feed a chain through it. I think it looks cute. What do you think? Now I need some lighting over the island. I'm using these little plastic containers for my pendant lighting with my little bulbs. First I need to find some chain to hang my lights. I want it to match the chandelier, but I'm not sure I have enough. Looks like I have enough. To hold my little bulbs, I'm drilling a hole on top of the container so I can feed the chain through. I have this hula skirt I bought at the dollar store. I'm going to use it to wrap the containers. Thank you. 
To hold my lighting over the kitchen, I'm going to screw in these eyelet screws into this piece of wood. That way it will be level. I think they turned out really cute. What do you think? I think there's a great spot over there for my cutting board wall gallery. I'm gonna use this craft stick, balsa wood, and these plant label sticks from the dollar store. These are great for creating miniatures. I grabbed a handful of them. They're usually out of stock. And I'm using these wood rounds that were attached on the table runner. I bought at a garage sale for only 75 cents. I'm going to make some cushions for the kitchen chairs to give them some oomph. These chairs are originally from this dining room set. I painted them black. Now I need some fabric. I love this fabric, but not for the cushions. Maybe for a bedspread. Maybe this one? Nope. I have these blankets I made for the Skull Academy dorm room. I think the pattern will work. It looks like snakeskin. I'm using a couple of layers of cardboard and some of this foam that I saved from packaging.
I hot glued the sides of the bed covers for the dorm rooms, so I have to cut out the middle pieces to glue onto the seat cushion. The sides are a bit messy, so I'm going to glue on a strip of the fabric to clean it up. I just hope I have enough, because this is the last of the fabric. Turned out better than I thought it would, maybe just a tad bit too big, but I think it'll still look good. What do you think? I found these bamboo coasters at the thrift store. I think if I cut them in half, it would be great as a kitchen floor mat. And now for the final touches. I love how the kitchen looks now. I think my favorite thing is the cow picture. Which part of the kitchen is your favorite? Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Bye for now.